So you might be wondering, what's happened to all those uh, Brexit MEPs? Why haven't we heard about them? Well, in true uh, British journalistic fashion, no one pays uh, any attention to what's going on in Brussels, which was part of the problem with what went on with all the Brexit vote. No one knew what the hell was going on in Brussels. So naturally, the Brexit party MEPs have set about um, trying to quote unquote expose the Brussels gravy train. However, <laughs> um, their attempts have been <laughs> um, uh, humorous, shall we say, at best. <laughs> so this comes from politics.co.uk. So Brexit party MEPs pitiful attempts to uncover a Brussels gravy train. For the Brexit Party's new MEPs, irony is officially dead. It was inevitable that the 29 reluctant deputies would eventually have to travel to Brussels to pretend to take their siege, which was, uh, which was unanticipated... What was unanticipated, sorry, was their embarrassingly dim campaign to expose EU corruption by pocketing the benefits intended for people actually doing the job. Anunziata Rees-Mogg was quick to complain that she'd, been, that she'd been given a free iPad for no very obvious reason, revealing as much about her ignorance of her responsibilities as it does her planned work ethic. There's a kind of entitled tragedy to her subsequent complaints about a salary she's not only drawing, but campaigned across the country to get. Reese uh, Mogg is one of the many MPs, that's an undiata, shall we say, not the other one, uh, who's, who's feature, uh, who is the feature in a centrepiece of this effort, a baffling video montage of Brexit Party politicians arriving in Brussels only to decry their own presence and criticise their resources being wasted on them. Outside a European Parliament building, the MEP-elect Christina jo Jordan tells the camera without a trace of self-awareness, look where I am now. How absolutely disappointing. It is, <laughs> it is hard to disagree. In an in evident uh, moment of clarity, she describes it as a sad reflection of the country that is, <laughs> that is someone like her should be there representing the South West. Of course, in it, and undermining our presence in a parliament we should still contribute to as an EU member, she's doing anything but represent the interests of her constituents. The donkey, the donkey advert, uh, advocate and occasional animal uh, rights, rights activist Anne Widdicombe also features in the video, urging, views, urging viewers not to complain about Westminster expenses in the light of what she's seen in Brussels which presumably means she found someone else vain enough to spend £9,000 of taxpayers' money on their own newspaper clippings. Others uh, pled on social media and press, for example, that Claire Fox heroically accepted the institution's business class travel recommendations in a, a, a know-nothing-tell-all piece entitled The Gravy Train, she insists she'll churn out more exposers every time she heads to Brussels, but don't expect a flurry of articles any time soon. Lucy Harris, the new elected representative for Yorkshire and Humber, announced after a recent trip to Brussels that she'd finally been to the EU for the first time. God knows what will happen when she finds out, when she finds out she's been living there all along. Worse still, it took her being an elected it took her being elected to the European Parliament to find out that MEPs don't actually initiate legislation. No doubt spelling disaster for her, current, for her cunning plan to take us out of the EU single-handedly. However, spare a thought for John Longworth, the MEP, whose Brexit Central account of his uh, first week in the European Parliament is, a, is dangerous as it is hyperbolic. Maintaining a careful balance between blatant hypocrisy and exceptionalist jibes, Longworth recoils widely from the basic formalities of his new job, appropriates the very city as the capital of a country intended by, inv invented, by, invented by Britain, and criticises his German colleagues for not speaking enough English. His suspicion even uh, of hotel staff who have learnt his name after three years of visits betrays the kind of basic aversion to complacency, no doubt widespread enough among his new colleagues. 
The shock factor shouldn't be underestimated. Most of the Brexit Party's MEPs probably haven't realised that democratic representation is part of the EU, rather than experiencing awe at the privileged position they now hold. They haven't got past the bombshell of realising the job actually exists. But more than anything, this campaign to expose the apparent horror of the EU is a shameless smokescreen to allow their MEPs to draw the benefits afforded to those actually working on the European project, while offering folks offering facts outrage resistance for Brexit uh, for Brexit backers in Britain. Nigel Farage is no stranger to such, to such tactics, having lost half his MEP salary in 2018 to pay back uh, misspent public funds. What a dismal lack of self-awareness leads you to ridicule the staff, officers and infrastructure made available for, you, for the work you're refusing to do. If the Brexit Party's representatives reject the institution, where is the wholesale rejection of the paycheck, of the pension, of the democratic power their seats hold? What is, what is generally sad is not the allocation of resources to those trying to do their jobs, it's the wasteful entitlement and lack of awareness of those who won't. It's, it's shocking, this, and it generally is. I just want to reiterate that, that, that point of the whole Brexit Party mantra of rejecting Europe, but they won't reject the paycheck, they won't reject the pension, they won't reject you know, any of the other monetary benefits that they get from Brussels. So who's really on the gravy train? I'll tell you, it's the Brexit Party, and the fact that they are not doing their job. And we're going we're gonna to get back to... Uh, oh, what's her name now? Um... Oh yes, Lucy Harris, um, the representative for Yorkshire and Humber, because she is my representative, um, along with uh, uh, um, Majid Majid, the former mayor of Sheffield. Um, so you can trust me that Lucy Harris is going to be getting an interesting couple of letters and that she will feature um, quite a couple of times on this channel because, oh boy... <laughs> <laughs> there's there's someone we need to shall we say keep an eye on on this channel